Another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be, again, from Trouble League Round of Eight. We have Ninjo Ob. Just call him Ninjo. As the pink Terran bottom right-hand corner, I am unfamiliar with this player. However, I am familiar with Ash Ball. Ash, an amazing clan, fields a lot of great players, including Ash Streamer, who took runner-up in Hasu League. And Ball, if I recall, he's done a lot of stuff with CPL here and there. And I've seen him play here and there. Solid guy. This is going to be on Polypoid. And I need to... I almost feel like cheating and looking at the bracket, or at least looking at replays ahead to see who's playing who in the next round. One of these guys is going to play Agistol. The other one uh, will play Mighty. And I forgot to look up who was on the fourth side of the bracket. My brain's... Between... There's a little bit of context switching that happens going between Hostel League and Chobo League. And my brain... Part of it is I also want to push through these to get to BSL 12 because I'm not sure if I'm looking forward to going into Hasu League again because there's still I really want to see more players up and coming and more people push out of Chobo League into Hasu League because currently in Hasu League there's twice as many Protoss players as there are the other two races that is if you combine Terran and Zerg there I still think there's a few more Protoss players overall Ninjob doing kind of the anti-zealot interior build with his barracks but interior gateway here for Ball. And yeah, casting all the PvP is draining, particularly in the, the later rounds is what I feel. I like seeing PvP. Casting, I don't know how many PvP games I casted in a row. It was a lot. So I'm not sure if I'm looking forward to doing that again. Want to see some ver Zerg versus Zerg. Is what I want to see. Refinery being plot down. For Ninja, we'll see how many SCVs dedicates to it. And we'll get a good idea of whether he's going faster factory or faster command center. Ball is scouting clockwise, as is Ninjo. And as a result, Ninjo is going to come in and scout everything. First thing he's going to see is a gateway not producing a zealot. And three probes immediately on gas with that cybernetic score about halfway finished. And should be able to continue to wander around to get good looks, which suggests usually, sometimes early tech, but more often one gateway into an attempted... Quick expansion. First Marine being produced. He's going to be able to block this ramp. And that is going to deny Ball any form of information. And we do have that factory being plopped down. However, only a single SCV in gas. Which usually indicates that we're going to see that machine shop. And then siege tech. And then it uh, looks like we had a pause. And unpause. I always like the... <laughs> it's like pause and then just a whole bunch of chat. Uh, off the unpause. All at once because of the way the Brood War replay works. One day I'd like to see like an essay or like a tome. Oh, the Marines, oh no! The Marines moving out of position for a moment and as a result, Ball is gonna be able to sneak in and see this factory building and also got a good look at that single SCV on gas. Barracks is lifting off and this was right as Ninjo was moving forward to plant things at his natural expansion. Actually opting, kind of a, I'm not sure about this maneuver, opting to put a bunker down. Now. I almost feel like he could have gone command center before this bunker is I guess what I'm trying to say. With how everything's working out. Maybe not. I take that back. The Dragoon could have been on its way. Could have been... Ignore me. Ignore me with that comment. Range about halfway finished. Two Dragoons right there. SCV trying to pull the same maneuver on the opposite side of the map. And with Misfire it is going to accomplish it. Sneaking up. Going to be able to go ahead and see a lack of secondary tech. Which again is going to give a big indicator that Ball was opting for one gate into expand. Which it looks like he is now maneuvering down to go ahead and do. Two Dragoons walking their way across. As long as they have that range upgrade. They do have better range than those Marines. Which typically because Bio is just ineffective unless you're doing some sort of interesting early game cheese against Protoss. You can pound away at that bunker and cost your opponent a few minerals for free, basically. Oh, you got to be a little bit careful about where you're positioning them. Command center just about finished. Siege tank's actually already there. Does not... And actually, I like that maneuver from, from Ninjo. Because oftentimes what you have to worry about as a Terran is, is that tank getting picked off. 
And usually you'll see that with a little bit more Dragoon pressure. Usually if there's three or four Dragoons, rather than camping back, if they're kind of pressing that front door, they can sneak by and pick up that siege tank. But by lifting up the barracks and sneaking the siege tank underneath, it made it difficult to target. And as a result, he's going to have more security on his front and is not going to have to expend any resources, likely repairing this bunker. Now, Ball needs to be careful moving these Dragoons forward. Otherwise, with a little bit of a move out with some Marines and siege tanks, he might end up losing a Dragoon and being a little bit underpowered to deal with something coming in the mid game after this. Third, third siege tank being produced. And two comp set stations, a second refinery plopping down for Ninjava. And now I'm wondering if he's going to go into that bread and butter build. Or if he's got some sort of earlier game pressure. Or if he's just going to opt to play a little bit more of a passive macro game. Three siege tanks, three marines actually already diving up to catch these dragoons. I think this was a decision off of seeing that and gets one of the Dragoons. I think this was seeing the smaller Dragoon count opted to be a little bit more aggressive with this, and it pays off. I like that decision. I really like that decision making from Ninjo, because that's not a I'm going to kill you maneuver. That is, I'm going to bleed your Dragoon count and punish you for the lower Dragoon count out on the front door. If you are going to give me this inch, I'm going to take a yard is what that statement was. More Dragoons filtering forward, holding the ramp the wide ramp assimilator going down for ball he has opted to robotics tech to deal with any sort of vulture rass each tech is being upgraded we do see a few vultures i don't think they're I, I don't recall mines or speed being upgraded we do have level one weapons on the way so it looks like currently ninja is yeah going for and honestly, with all these indicators, second machine shop popping down. Second machine shop oftentimes will indicate that we're going to have a little bit of a... Maybe the double vulture upgrade, so maybe a vulture foray. Pylon blockade as Ashball setting up to go ahead and take his 9 o'clock. But it, it's also potentially what we're going to see is just heavier tanks and a level 1 weapons move out. We'll see it's going to be indicative of whether the upgrades start firing right now or not. Vulture meandering up, does manage to sneak up into the ramp, is going to see this probe in position. Probe dies, which is going to slow down that third. Should be cleaned up by this Dragoon otherwise. And we, in fact, do see just pure siege tanks being produced. So this is actually the, the way I've seen it previously done. This is, yeah, earlier, earlier machine shops, more siege tanks being produced early and then more vultures being produced a little bit later. We do have level 1 weapons about two-thirds the way finished. We'll see if he plops down and the starport upgrading as well. Now mines being researched up above both players, and I think this is more indicative of Ninjo going for perhaps a positional third rather than going for very, very early aggressive attack. We'll have to see, though. Starport, because again, yeah, I feel like nearly every turn these days is in fact plopping down that fast second army and going for that level two weapons, level one armor. But just the way he is slowly moving kind of this vision forward and also kind of being a little bit careful with these siege tanks. Yeah, has that command center building. So going to take a third, play the game from there. Oftentimes what you can do as a Terran player is go ahead and take your third, be in a position where you have a superior or just hit 200 basically before your Protoss opponent does have still heavy upgrades and more or less win the game as your Protoss opponent tries to position into you and you just splat the army he tries to field. The one danger of this is his balls moving forward with honestly he's kind of a skeleton crew to comparatively engage this. Five gateways in the background by the way I haven't taken a look at this space in a while he does have that forge down. But sometimes you'll, they'll try to run forward and disrupt this third base from going up. I don't think he's going to accomplish that with this few units. And he's actually got a good read on the situation. Because usually as Protoss, you want to be one base up. And he's already getting that fourth base up in that upper left-hand corner. Critically, though, this Nexus at the 9 o'clock position, until these probes get... Actually, good transfer. Until those probes are transferred up and doing their thing, doesn't really count as a base. Arbiter Tribunal... Star, uh, Stargate and Templar Archives kind of hidden at the natural expansion. Arbiters can be the difference in these matches. And also I want to point out that critically, because 
Ninja was playing a little bit safer and didn't want get, didn't want Ball to be able to sneak in and pick off this command center. This third is going to be somewhat delayed. That gives more time for that Nexus to warp in. And again, if we can see some probes come in this upper left-hand corner, which looks like they're transferring now, Ball on top of it. That is going to give Ball uh, the economic lead that you usually want as a Protoss at this stage of the game. However, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor is just around the corner. And this is a significant amount of siege tanks. Some additional factories are being placed down. Ball's going to want to fill out this army or get an Arbiter out in the air, which is about halfway finished now, to engage any potential aggression that Ninjo could send out against him. I'm almost wondering if we can see additional machine shot momentarily and another... Yeah, there's the other factory. So now it's kind of that macro race. And I think what Ball is positioning to do is he's already got two gateways in this upper left-hand corner. He's planning on doing the guerrilla warfare tactics style of Protoss play, which is... I will be everywhere you are not. Let me go ahead and avoid and just zealot bomb or stasis and get favorable engagements when I can in off position locations when your army split. But otherwise, I'm going to try to recall on your main, take out the factories when I can. And when you dive into my base, I'm going to rebuild gateways elsewhere and rely on just the latent bank I have to stay alive. Level one weapons about halfway finished for ball comparatively. An exploratory zealot making its way across. Handful of vultures making their way across. They should be able to sneak up and find this base. And you can see the gateway is already being warped in for those purposes. They should be able to clean that zealot. They also get a little bit of map control by placing those mines here in the middle of the map. The one thing that is lacking on ball side is a bit of vision. Because you can see across the map, a lot of this map is dark, and usually you want to have good eyes on what your opponent's up to. Losing a probe, and actually having to take down one of his own pylons to move Dragoons to go ahead and clean out these vultures. And honestly, actually, with these six vultures, with mine complements, they did. there should be still some mines left, I believe. They should be able to take out these Dragoons. Nexus canceled. Honestly, not a lot of time left. Le uh, lost there, but it will be somewhat annoying. Huge amount of siege tanks on the ground. And that is the scary component of this army. With, Upon seeing that, Ninja up with that science vessel is grouping up to start pressing into his opponent. Eight gateways, two machine shops overall. No Goliath, well, sorry, one Goliath to potentially deal with an Arbiter. Stasis, Recall was researched before Stasis, keep in mind. Stasis is still not online. Dragoons on hold position being engaged here to the north, getting splatted. And this is, again, the tactic here is Ball doesn't want to full-on engage this force. He wants to get favorable engagements, but otherwise just slow Ninjob down and perhaps, theoretically, engage where he's not because he's behind on weapons upgrades. But this is a scary army. This is a very, very scary army. And the thing is, is the turnaround threats, you need to make them legitimate. Arbiter making its way across. It doesn't have enough for anything cloaking this. Science Vels is taken out, so it's going to require some scans. Vulture's on the low ground. And now trying to get a pincer attack from underneath while those tanks are unseaged. They are going to be able to peel a few from that corner. There is an Arbiter here. But unfortunately, yeah, Ball just getting wrecked. That was not a favorable engagement. Ninjob happy to engage that from both ends. He's still a very late stasis as that's coming in. Arbiter trying to do damage from up above, but he has no standing army. So he's going to have to rebuild his army. Upper left-hand corner. Honestly, I feel like that's that moment where you just want to ignore the Terran army and maybe dive at the, the third... Maybe do a recall on the natural, force that army back, or force it into the base trade situation. Instead, Ninjo's just like, okay, if you're going to do that, I am just going to walk straight into your natural expansion, take everything out, nearly unopposed. And he knows he's in that speedy situation where he needs to do as much damage before that army is able to replenish as quickly as possible. And is 
splitting his army to try to do so. Decent stasis, but not a lot underneath to really capitalize on those stasis tanks. Looks like there are some cloaked zealots working on some siege tanks down below. A commsat out of position. A, an incredibly lucky mine. Clearing out all sorts of zealots and some dragoons. And it looks like Ninjo was able to take that natural expansion out. So win there. But he has not been able to take out that 9 clock base. And the rest of his army has been able to... Has been cleaned out. And Ball has been able to resupply to something within striking range. Still has two Arbiters overhead, which is going to be critical. Still trying to threaten that 9 o'clock. Supplies are even. Usually as Protoss, you want to be a little bit ahead. But there's only four Siege Tanks on the ground. Big Mind Drag into those Siege Tanks. The Zealots concentrating on that tank on the left. There's only one Siege Tank standing. And now Ninjob... Pushing forward with some Goliaths to threaten those Arbiters. The Arbiters should be able to back off. Well, never mind. They're going to dive in. Stasis, a handful of units. Loses one of those Arbiters. That might be critical. Loses both Arbiters and still two Goliaths standing. One cannon warping in here at the 9 o'clock location. Still, I feel like this is an overall win for Ball. Although, in this resupplying, he has not been able to keep up his macro. And I don't mean macro in the... E in the aspect of building his army. He's actually even, unfortunately, falling behind now to Ninjo. What's critical is, is that if he's doing this, he needs to keep a sizable bank to be able to resupply his army and to keep producing troops to engage and harass. And again, I feel like keeping those Arbiters alive is also critical. Level 3 weapons now online. Level 3 armor on the way. For Ninjo, and Ninjo has another scary army starting to make its way across the map. Here's the thing, though. Mains mined out for Ninjo. Natural expansion, still there. I think I might have missed a recall or something like that. Here, there. Mineral only is mining. And he's taken that 3 o'clock base. Ball taking this opportunity to also do some mine clearing in the middle of the map. Ninjo denying additional bases out. This is where he can just sit back and, I think... Ninjo's making a statement here. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to continue now that I have three mining bases effectively. At my natural, at the mineral only, and at the three o'clock. You go ahead and come to me. I'm just going to shell up, hit 200, and roll you over. So it gives Ball a bit of a reprieve. But at the same time, Ball is critically behind, honestly, in these higher tier tech units that he needs to be able to deal with a heavily upgraded... Terran Arsenal. This is only one Arbiter I see in the air. It's heavily damaged. Just now is capable of a recall. I see no High Templar. I don't see any shuttles. And with only a single Arbiter, I do not think that is going to be sufficient. A single Stasis is not going to win this engagement. Dragoon getting splatted. Maybe he'll go for an end around. But here's the other thing. Ninjob has done a pretty good job of mining kind of around the map to see kind of the corners where that Arbiter could try to sneak through the lines and go for a recall. This is a very Dragoon-heavy force. And with this amount of Siege Tanks and this amount of Vultures, it is getting eaten alive. Siege Tanks not even bothering to Siege, just walking forward with the, level, the, the weapons upgrade differential. Now Sieging. And SCV is like, you know what? I want to get in on this. Has a kill, even. What a hero. Ball sitting at 130 supply, approximately 126. And Ninjob now actually might just be able to do a contain on the main. And big EMP breaking those shields. Unfortunately, not a lot of siege tanks to, to follow this up with. I think this is mostly, yeah, siege tanks and a handful of units making its way across that zealot coming out of nowhere. Sacrifice his life for the cause. 12 o'clock base is up for Ball, but he needs to start mining at it. What a huge stasis, though, for Ball. Catching a huge amount of Siege Tanks. Another Arbiter wandering up. Good EMP, though, to counter. And there's just not enough units on the ground for Ball. So I think Ball... Ooh. That was lucky. Well, let's see if it turns out... Are we going to get a shot from above? Yeah. Getting all sorts of kills on those probes as they're transferring. 
And now the Zealot's waking up. Level 2 weapons. He's there for Ball. But again, he's just it feels like he's just working with a skeleton crew. Out where on the map. I think he is setting up again to just play a longer map. Ninjo, already keen to this, is like, okay, you're going to try to play that game. I'm going to go ahead and mine and kind of camp out this area. And I'm going to go ahead and dive up with these vultures and try to harass that 12 o'clock. He's already taking the upper right-hand corner. Prepared for that longer-term match. And once again, wandering in to just clear everything Ball has to force him to rebuild tech. Ball isn't out of this, but I'm going to say it, I don't think it's looking good for him with how this is being executed thus far. Not in the position he wants to be. Vultures using Comsat to engage some Goliaths. Not a lot of Goliaths. DT and a Zealot under Arbiter. Not much happening there, but mostly a distractionary force. Ninjo getting a little bit sloppy with his army, but can afford to do so. Another good stasis. But again, stasis is without enough army underneath to capitalize for Ball, which is unfortunate. So at best, this is delaying Ninjo a minute or two. Well, a couple minutes while that stasis is in place. Siege tanks can continue, uh, continuing to press forward. He's getting a little bit lucky, I think, because... Let's just say Ninjo's getting a little bit unlucky because his comp set's just not on point. He's trying to do a lot of things at once, though. He's transferring units to that upper right-hand corner. Now the Goliath's moving forward, taking those Arbiters out. I think he's going to be able to clear out this space without too much resistance. Only four Dragoons, two Arbiters, and this is, again, several Siege Tanks. Ninjo just needs to gather and go. But Ninjo's still not. I was expecting him to be able to push into that main. Hasn't been able to do so there. And with that pushed across, with that army boxed in, that upper left-hand corner, he's just going to walk these units here, take out that cannon, siege low, and take out that 12 o'clock base. Finally, an army to be able to push this back, but too little too late, that nexus is gone. And is walking into another contained situation. Finally, some zealots wandering in with some Dragoons to support this. They might be able to clean this up with a decent engagement point, but now the Arbiters aren't there. Still, I think this might be sufficient forces. Empty Compsat. Arbiter coming from the north, but not covering the units from the south. Very quickly getting wiped out by those Goliaths. Dragoons trying to sneak forward, and unfortunately, Ball, yeah, not able to have a collected army. That time did not have Stasis's, Stasis, to make it happen. And he still has tanks, yeah, pushing into that one. And realizing that he just doesn't have the army to get it done, realizing he was getting contained at his secondary supply point, realizing that he couldn't get a, a cohesive army together is going to GG. Game one goes to Ninjo. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.